It's a beautiful day to work on the truck. Today, I'm going to clean the distributor cap. However, it has all these wires in it. So I need to first label the wires, which I started one, two, three, four, and I'll finish up five, six. Then I'm going to trace each wire, the ones that go here to the actual distributor. I'm going to write 1A for each, 2A, 3A. And then the ones that go down here will be labeled with B, 1B, 2B, 3B, etc. It's not the prettiest, but it is labeled. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I have one through six A here and one through six B there. And this one points to the back right here. This is an important step. It'll make it so much easier. Pro tip, also label the tops. That'll make it easier when you have to put them back on. And the distributor is so cool. So it takes the electricity from the ignition coil through the spark plug wires to each spark plug. And then this little piece inside of here, right here, that spins and as it points to each spark plug, it tells it which one to send electricity to to make it fire. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 And it just spins around, spins around. And that's how the distributor works. It's amazing. So this truck actually has two distributors. Um, and it actually has 12 spark plugs for the six cylinder engine. So it has a backup spark plug. I'm going to remove the plastic boot, which protects this little piece as it screws in. And so this is actually, these are actually the wires that take the electricity from the ignition coil to the spark plugs. So it's important to keep these wires protected, which is why they're inside the distributor cap and then protected by the boot. So the boot slides off and then this piece unscrews. And it screws in and this is what it looks like on the inside. And that's why, we, why I labeled it in advance. I'm just gonna finish it up real quickly. Now that I have the cap off, it's a lot easier to see what the distributor looks like. And here you go. So that, now we gotta take off this one. This will be interesting. This one's totally different. We undid the clip. And now we're going to very carefully take this screw out without losing the screw. And now we're gonna lift this puppy up and cool. It's like a magic trick. Where are my magician friends when I need them? So how cool is this? I took out the screws. I have these first two screws I took out. See how they're so pointed? So these are actually the points. When I did that, I pulled out the wire. And look it, you can actually see where it goes through and hits the wire. Hey, isn't that nifty? So I'm going to continue taking out the rest of these. It doesn't look all that different, although I have just WD-40 washed these, so, or really I sprayed WD-40 on them and I wiped them off really well, took off all the schmutz. There actually wasn't too much, just about a little bit. And it was mostly in here, so I might even get that little bit again. Then I took compressed air and I blew it out. So these should be ready. My next step is to order new spark plugs and new spark plug wires. Instead of just replacing the spark plug wires and see if it turns over, I'm just gonna replace the whole thing so I only have to do it once. I pulled the cord off number one, A. See, one is down here, here's one A. So I'm gonna see if this deep socket will fit on here if I can take out the spark plug. Before I close up the engine, I want to just talk to you about one last thing to do is we need to plug up this hole that the spark plug came out of. So I have my shop towel, my little paper towel, and I'm going to make it a little bit skinnier and I'm going to plug up that hole. And by plugging that hole, I'm going to ensure that no critters, no bugs, no lizards, spiders, anything like that get into the hole. And that is a nice plugged hole, saving us problems in the future. My new spark plugs and new spark plug wires came in today. So I think that the hardest part is not actually going to be changing the spark plugs, but it's going to be changing the wires because I've got to get them through these red donuts again. 
And that could be a challenge. Let's take off the rest of the spark plugs. Look how easily that popped out right there. So the socket wrench I was using was a little bit too long and I had it at an angle. I thought maybe I could get it done, but in fact, I broke my spark plug. So what I did was I took off the neck. That's what I call it. Maybe that's not the technical term, but I took it off. So now I've got a shorter socket wrench. And so this should work. Let's give it a try. Before I put the spark plug back in the engine, I need to test the gap. So what that means is I take an old spark plug and I take my gap measuring device, my little gap tool from AutoZone, and I slide it in between and I see where there feels like there's resistance. So this looks like 0 0.035 right there. See that? Okay. Now, I don't know if the engine isn't starting because there's a bad wire or a bad spark plug, or if these spark plugs were never gapped because I don't know the last time they were changed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to just blindly slide my new spark plug over. Although the really cool thing is it actually does stop right at 0 0.035, can you see that? So here we are right exactly where I want it. All right, however, just to double check, because this is an easy fix, it's easy to change a spark plug, they're inexpensive, but why do it twice if I don't have to? It's an easy, easy fix, right? So, to double check it, I googled 1952 truck spark plug gap, and it said for a V6, it should be right at 0 0.035, which is sort of insane that the manufacturer has it right there, at 0 0.035, but it's fantastic, right? So <laughs> I'm just super lucky. Um, I could even just test another one just to be safe. Like maybe that's an anomaly, but that's where I'm feeling the resistance is right there, right at the 0 0.035. So I'm going to put my new spark plugs back in. I'm gonna tighten them by hand. I'm gonna use a little pressure and tighten them in with a wrench. It only needs a little bit. It really doesn't need too much. And then any holes I have left over, I shouldn't have any, um, but anything that maybe, if I don't have time to finish them at this moment, I'm gonna plug up my holes with the towel, save myself the problems eight. later, and then I'm gonna head inside and make dinner for the family. Let's screw these puppies back in. I'm just hand tightening them for right now, and then I'm gonna come back with my socket wrench and actually tighten them down. I just wanna. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of light pressure as I tighten them in. Ta-da! This joint allows me to work at some pretty interesting angles. You can see it bends just like a knee or an elbow, and that's why it's called a joint. To pull the spark plug wires, the original ones, the old ones, out of here, I'm going to take off each of these boots, and then I should be able to just pull the wire right through. However, before I can take off the boot, I have to unscrew each of these little caps. And that's an important step, because they don't make these caps anymore. So I have to be really careful and hold on to them. It just unscrews real easily, and then it just slides right off. And then the boot pulls right off, and there you go. Because these spark plugs have a screw that goes in to the point, and the screw is actually the conductor of electricity from the distributor actually into the wire. So these will just slide right out. And 
and actually I was able to slide out these other guys very easily and I've just put them right next to me. My new spark plug wires came in two different sizes which makes sense because some spark plugs are closer to their distributors while some have quite a distance, distance to travel. So as you can see I have some shorter ones and I have some longer ones. I've popped number one and two B in and they slid so easily in through their spark plug ring, down and around through the back. We bypassed this ring because this ring will lead directly into this distributor beneath it, in through this ring, and then these will go to this distributor. And if they're too long, I suppose I will just cut them or I will leave them extra long. We'll just have to wait and see. Part of the mystery. I'm super happy with this progress. It looks a little bit messy and I want to just take a minute and explain to you why. So I have three spark plug wires left to put in. And these are DIY wires. So typically what you would do is you would keep your wires. Unfortunately, I labeled them. So I have three B here. So I would find three B and I would cut it to the same size. However, what I've decided to do is a little bit different. No surprise, it is me after all. And I've decided to attach my wires with a label at the top and of course a label at the bottom. And then I want to cut them to size so that I don't accidentally cut them too short or have to pull them and struggle. So I'd rather do it in reverse where I put on my spark plug wires and then cut them and see if I need, I mean, I can be very cautious when I cut. So if I need to cut a little bit extra off or cut a couple times, I can always measure once and cut two or three times, which is such a luxury to have. So, um, cause you know, normally it's measured two or three times and cut once and I can do it in reverse, which is a tr uh, tremendous luxury. It really is. So I'm just going to pop these last three on, finish labeling them. Spark plugs are in, check. They are tightened by hand and with my socket wrench, check. Spark plug wires are on and labeled top and bottoms, check. Now it's time to put on the distributor caps and measure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this one here where it goes. These boots hold, will hold the boot. It seems to be about the same size as the rubber around the wire. So getting it to slide up the wire is pretty tricky. It just takes a little bit of muscle. And I don't mind using muscle. However, um, if there's an easier way I can do it to get it done a little quicker, I'm all for it. I have a cup of soapy water and I'm just going to put a little bit of soapy water on the wire to see if it helps make it easier to slide these guys on. It's a good sign. Got it in the hole. Hey, it's working! Oh, you can't see this very well. Sorry, it's not the best camera angle. There we go, look at that, it's working. Oh, amazing. Oh, we gotta thank the guys over at Napa for this trick. Woo! Go Napa! <laughs> thank you! So you wanna slide the boot higher than you need it. And there we go. So now, once that's on, I can slide the boot back down a little bit. Make sure my, my wires go down perfectly. I like them to kind of cover the entire base. That's how it was when I picked it up and when I undid it, so I like to try and do it the same way. These wires are way too long. However, to get them to the right length, I'm going to put the distributor cap on first. By doing that, I'll be able to see exactly how much wire I need, so I won't get too, too much or too little. It sits just like so. This is the front, this is the back. They made it really easy to remember because they put a little notch right here, which aligns with the notch down here. Be careful not to damage this piece on the inside. Got it. Ha! Look at that. Got the distributor cap on. Boom. It's going to be one, four, two, six, five, three.
Alright, let's just cut the tiny tip of these wires off. I think the wires are too long because they're covering up the rivet. So we're just going to cut off a tiny, tiny bit. There we go. That was the problem. We got to make sure our wires are the right length. But whoa, look at that. Those wires are going to be way too long. And what All right, five goes here. Let's do five next. So this is 5A. And 5A is going to go in here, although that's really long, so let's cut it down a little bit. Let's see where we actually want it. It might be helpful even just to slide it right through here. Let's see. Because then it would go... Oh, 5A. And you're just going to feed directly into here. That wouldn't be bad. So I'll give you a little bit of extra room. So I want you right around here. Yeah? I want the wires right around here. Right around that E. Okay, so we're gonna cut this off. Right here. Boom. I didn't give myself much margin for error on this one, so I wanted to be really careful. And I think we nailed it. Perfect. The ignition coil, the original ignition coil, has a different connector. Do you see that? There's the boot. So if we just pull the boot back a little bit. There we go. See that? So what I'm going to use is something similar. This guy. Still with the boot. I'll probably take the wires down a little bit. But this should just sit right like that. And then... Here's a boot. Okay. I'm going to get my boot over the wires. I'm going to soap and water this right up. Use my handy dandy trick. And on goes the boot. Now they only had a few, tiny, tiny, few wires sticking out at the very bottom. Cut one about there. We'll leave a few wires sticking out. When all the boots popped off, I took them all off because I realized I needed to put them back on and I needed to do it in a logical order so that I could get my hands in here. I'm wetting the inside with my soap and water combination. That really seems to help. You could also use Vaseline to lubricate it. Or Changing spark plugs isn't always like this. This is my set. It's a DIY set because <laughs> they don't make exactly what I need for the fire truck. It's such an old truck that I just got to DIY it, so. I'm going to do this one next. This is the one that goes into the ignition coil. So the water combination. This is the one that goes right in the center. I think if I save it for the end, I won't be able to get my hand in there. So I want to do it logically. As a reminder, this one had a really interesting cover on it. So we're going to use our boot. I want these flaps to hug it nice and tightly. Well, 
We're on number 6A. Even with redoing it, we're just fucking right along. Our numbers for the distributor are 642135. 642135, that's what we have to remember. This piece is going to go straight into there, and that's why it's so important that the wire sticks out the bottom. Got to measure. So I'm actually just going to lay this on here and measure first for all of them. I measured everything a little bit too long, just in case. Now the way that these work, the wire slides into the hole like that and then the screw comes in like this it goes right on top of it it'll be screwed in and it's that that creates the electric current it's a different type of distributor Gotta be careful not to strip the screw. It has to go far enough in that it'll puncture the wire. I came up short one wire. So I have some of these silver pieces. My kit didn't come with any of these little black semicircles to hold this together. So I'm gonna see if I can make it. And if not, I will be purchasing a new wire. got it all wired up. I have a makeshift connector for number five. I think you saw me making it. If not, here's a picture. And um, let's see how it goes. Fingers crossed. Wish me luck. 